Warning. The following will contain spoilers. Sundoku. Noun. Language of origin. Japanese. Meaning. The act of acquiring books but allowing them to pile up unread. A school for gifted youngsters born with superpowers. Heroes that have to look at their options for marketing and public relations as much as how they are ranked saving lives. Threats from supervillains who have the ability to steal powers and incorporate them into their own bodies. Nope, this isn't the world of X-Men, Booster Gold, One Punch Man, or the good seasons of Heroes, but it's the world of My Hero Academia, a resounding super success and modern classic of shonen comics and anime. The best-selling comic has had multiple spin-offs, a multi-season animated series, and the requisite video games, but the flashiest of them all are major motion pictures. Legendary is theoretically working on a big budget American film for the franchise, and with the solid takes on Pokemon and Godzilla under their belt, there's a cautious optimism, aided by the fact that the franchise already takes a significant inspiration from American superheroics. Before that film is produced, we already have a pair of films for the franchise. Let's open up Animation Beyond Nations, a look at cartoons crossing the globe. Taking a look at the second and theoretically final film of the franchise, Funimation has released the film on a standard No Frills Blu-ray, but the drive at the heart of the franchise stands. How great of a hero can one be without anything special about them. Comics, games, animation, and a variety of henshin credible superhero shows from Japan. Chad Bonin guides you through the Sundoku Zone. So, what if we're looking for somebody who's like all for one? Oh, come on, there aren't any villains on this island. We did it! Whoa, you okay? There's only one way we can stop him. Delaware Smash! Air Force! Weaponized blasts of air. An interesting use of your quirk. The heroes of Class 1A are given a special task, to be the personal heroes of an island of 1,000 citizens. It's a simple and small island, where the most a hero is needed for is a bit of lost luggage hunting and minor crimes. Should be easy, right? When a new villain sets his sights on the island and two particular inhabitants, the students find themselves having to hold off the forces of the League of Villains. Without a quick rescue from more established heroes, Nine, the power-stealing villain, is a prominent match for the children and leads to a war of attrition over the night. Aided by three associates, he's out to gain the ability that a small child has, that of cellular regeneration. If granted this power, Nine would become unstoppable. All the student heroes manage to get a few scenes of focus, whether it be from their peaceful heroism starting point, or the damaging battle that ensues once Nine and his team appears. LLZ can stop twinkling it! My supernova! This focus on the students, the introduction of four brand new villains, and two children means that, outside of minimal appearances, the adult heroes are largely absent. As the main character of the franchise, Midoriya gets the bulk of screen time and significant story beats that would have large implications if not reversed by the end of the movie. Akugo, the anti-hero of the franchise, features as the second lead of the movie and runs into the same issues as Midoriya. The plot advances for his character are completely reversed by the end of the movie. He's crazy strong! Limited on how much plot it can actually feature over a theatrical movie that introduces a half dozen characters, the cast is frequently separated for large battles where they can each get a few particular moves in. It's a highlight rule of their characterizations and powers and not an in-depth character study. Where the movie truly shines is the focus on how Midoriya could truly be the greatest hero the world would ever see, and it's his dedication to justice at the cost of his own benefits. Threatened by the onslaught of Nine's abilities and with a young child on the line, Midoriya and Bakugo put their best moves forward and come up short. When faced with utter defeat, Midoriya makes the penultimate sacrifice sacrifice and passes his one-for-all ability to Bakugo. Granted both the ultimate superpower quirk and his own explosive one, and with Midoriya retaining one-for-all for a little bit, the pair can combine their forces to fight back. Is it a great concept for a theatrical film? Undoubtedly. Does this completely get reversed by the end of the film? Sadly, yes. This is the struggle of any movie adaptation of a TV show. Does it impact the story or not? While Nine and his team of warriors are an appropriate threat for the children, their motivation is minimal and backgrounds are sparse. Only a small amount of flashbacks are available. Nine is presented at the end of the day as a force of nature versus a villain that would be able to handle his own storyline. His support team? It'd be hard to tell you their names or reasons for fighting without looking at notes. Lastly, the children in this movie are, well, every children you've ever seen in an action 
action movie. A little spunky, but genuine enough that you do hope the heroes save them from the threats. The movie stands alone, but that's both its greatest strength and weakness. It's not hard to use the movie as a bit of an introduction to the wide range of students, but it's also a bit too broad for fans versed in the franchise. Talk out there, right? Yeah. This movie was originally one of the planned endings for My Hero Academia. Right. And it was something I had thought about once was, wouldn't it be crazy? It may be a bit cruel and heavy-handed to say there's nothing special about this release, and that's why I point out that the movie came out in October 2020 on this Blu-ray, digital, DVD combo. It's commendable that a special feature focusing on the U.S. voice cast produced in 2020 happened at all, given how this year keeps going. Likewise, the inclusion of a handful of trailers for the Japanese release are appreciated. But this is a major movie based off a major anime and manga franchise. Could there not have been more to toss on the disc? No interviews with the creator in Japan? No Japanese voice cast appearing on some small talk show? No discussion with the production crew? In a world where pro mare and weathering with you go above and beyond, it's disappointing that this release isn't very plus ultra. One aspect hinted at in the interview with the voice cast that would be fascinating to hear from the source is that the movie features elements that were meant to be used in the eventual series finale. Undoubtedly, this is likely in reference to the fact that Deku grants Bakugo the power of one for all, which could theoretically be seen as the fulfillment of Deku's opening narration. The story of how I became the world's greatest hero. It could also be a reference to the villain, Nine, but given his status at the end of the movie, it seems unlikely that a character so integral to the finale of the series would be taken off the board. This is the content that would be great to fill out this release, and seeing discussion points like this relegated to side comments seems to miss some opportunities. One problem with theatrical movies for television series, additionally compounded by those based on an ongoing comic book series, is that the stakes are reduced. It's hard to get invested in a story when you know going into it that there's a status quo that will need to be returned to. The first movie, Two Heroes, ran into this problem with introducing support characters and items, Melissa and Midoriya's full gauntlet, that would be great additions to the can but largely disappeared after the film. It doesn't help that both movies are set on islands, narratively further removing them from the events of the main story, and are set on villains that are one and dones. These problems aren't exclusive to My Hero Academia or even animated series from Japan. The number of continuity problems alone that the Dragon Ball films add to the canon cannot be understated, is what I'm saying. When viewed on its own, it is an energizing story that wavers a little too close to Home Alone, where the spunky children of the canon set up traps to defeat a serious threat. The ending, with the tag team battle and power enhancement of our two heroes, is some of the best fighting the series has ever seen, and easily ranks up there with classic battles of two opposing heroes working together to fight a common foe. These heroes are the Goku and Vegeta of the 2010s, if Goku and Vegeta ever properly take a break. Additionally, the movie is predicated enough on being standalone that it's approachable to a novice to the franchise. The simple elevator pitch of, here's a school of superhero kids and one guy his powers from a big name superhero, is all that's needed to get a grasp of what's going on. It's hard to recommend much of a purchase of this Blu-ray, but can easily suggest a digital rental or an eventual Toonami airing. One can only hope. That's it for the Sudoku Zone, but the stack never ends. This program is brought to you by the support of members of the Sudoku Zone Patreon. If you enjoyed this episode and have the means, please consider joining to keep the show running and get an inside look on the production. Thank you. We got 